Number one. Garage Band Superstar by Lauren Hibbard. Long-term listeners who remember last year are probably going, I recognise that name. That's someone who was number one for Matt last year, but with an EP called Goober. Yes, Lauren Hibbard's Garage Band Superstar. The album is finally out this year. I listened to it and the part of me that loved the EP and the previous EP after that absolutely loves this album. Yep, so when there's kind of bands or artists that you really like and they mention that they are releasing new stuff, there's a kind of weird seeding that happens, kind of like football tournaments or sports tournaments where you kind of think, oh, there's more than likely I'm definitely going to listen to this and I'm going to be predetermined or pre-educated to kind of like it. And listen, and I knew I was going to like this album. What I wasn't expecting is to like it as much as I did. To put it bluntly, Dan Dan O'Dell, who was on the uh, B sides and the Blink One Eight Two episodes, he knows about my love for uh, the Wages of Fear album, Telesum and stuff, and the fact that I've named a metric over him. And so when I went to see him perform as Heartwork uh, early this year, um, and I'm telling him about this album, when I and I took him, he was taken aback slightly when I told him that this is probably my favourite album I've listened to since The Wages of Fear. Which, his eyes widened and went, oh, okay, you really like this album then. Working with Iron and Wine and penning six solo albums in recent years, prolific artist Joanna Warren recently told Uncut Magazine, as the pandemic hit, she was faced with a choice. Up sticks from New York to Wales, to a place she'd never been, to with a person with whom she'd only spent all of two weeks, or move back in with her parents and cry every day. Joanna Warren packed up her bags and moved her life to a small mid-Wales town, living in her homestead, surrounded by sheep, foraging for herbs and home brewing. She divorced herself from the bustle and touring treadmill of the past three years, but she started rewriting her album, that she tracked in Philadelphia. That album is my album of the year, Lessons from You. Assume the change and metamorphosis, but also the imperfections of being human. It was recorded live, the two-inch tape, capturing the performance of each song and each of the little minor imperfections, taking you on a lyrical journey and shape-shifting through sounds, from the scorched grunge of Piscean Lover, it's about holding on to the life raft as everything crumbles around you. It's all right. We're not okay. We burn out not to fade away, she sings, in a rare tip of the hat to Nirvana, to the raw delicacy of the piano-flecked two for a two, that its touching atmosphere is woven with brittle bars, which could have been played in a smoke-filled 1940s club. It bears a passing resemblance to cat power. Thirst for power... Hunger for fame, always was a junkie pain, sings Joanna Worm on the psych folk strum of lead single RB Orange. This exploration of masochistic ambition and artistic martyrdom shifts effortlessly from shuffling into an epic chorus line that captures all the contradictions of the male ego and turns it into a universal moment of self-discovery. Hoisted aloft, high on a wave, of 60s harmonies, and Warren's elastic vocals sitting somewhere between Sharon Van Etten and from a love-inspired groove. It's a superlative example of her songcraft. Warren also possesses a voice rich of experience and clarity, and songwriting of depth. On oath, she delivers an incredible spine-tingling performance, as if she's crying to the heavens, asking for the weight of our sins to be lifted from our backs as humanity, as this outstanding torch ballad holds you transfixed in its revelry, piano, steeple and forge, like the terrain of our home, it's a stunning song. Then there's the spindling arpeggios and percussive shuffles, a breakup ballad, high res, a sigh somewhere between the pointed lyricism of Big Thief and the bitter kiss-offs of Bob Dylan, haunting closer in Volvus, is rhythm with a tenuousness and fragility and failure of humanity. The piano bars housing Warren's meditative clarity as she muses on the ill-fated love story of Orpheus and Eurydice, fleeting, tragic and captivating. It's a wonderful wave goodbye.
My Name's Bill Cummings and Joanna Warren's Lessons for Mutants is my album of 2022. The album sound is like a kind of love letter to kind of late 90s, early noughties, pop punk. The strong influences like Weezer is throughout all of this. There's Blink-2, there's Green Day, but there's the South Californian bands like the Dolly Rots. The album is self-deprecating candy floss that he knows bad for you, but you keep eating it anyway. There's just loads of joy here and it's fantastic. I think it just, it just feels just nice to listen to. But then repeated listens to it, you start to kind of appreciate a little more subtlety and a lot more kind of introspective darkness in the lyrics. And it's that thing that's probably hooked me in when it comes to this album. In terms of lyrical content, it is pretty much can be described as the quarter life crisis and an ode to IBS. It's something that she's self proclaimed more or less. There's a, yeah, there's a whole song dedicated to like irritable bowel syndrome, but not in a blood and gang way. It's a lot more kind, but it's in a more almost weezerish way. But yeah, the the songs on this album are great. Opening with Lodacoaster and then me kicking with the lead single, Still Running 5K, which is easily my favourite song of this year. It feels like a it's a kind of high pop punk and new metal like kind of like the bits the bits that make them biscuit perhaps popular without the fred durst element um my opinions on fred durst you can hear all the way back in episode five the, but the kind of disc scratching the they did the shades of dj lethal the kind of rapping core verses um just about trying to pick up running uh like but pick up running and to kind of set self goals and everything but then the chorus is kicking and there's the kind of real layers of the song about feeling trapped in a kind of perpetual circle of doing the same thing over and over again and you can't help but compare yourselves to people who seem to be doing things much better or doing things right while you don't while you feel as if you're not doing your best it's something it's something that feels so relatable and so easy to apply to yourself in all sorts of different manner of things that it just struck out to me immediately and I'm like this is one of those songs that has something that kind of ticks a lot of boxes, but also just like, crap, that kind of kick, hits me in the gut a bit. It's not gut-wrenching in a Phoebe Bridges type of way, but the but the kind of payoff to what the song's doing, I feel, is really well written and just kind of nails its point home and continues that kind of self-deprecation of reality that kicks in when you realise the reality is kicking in. Songs like Average Joe, which feels mocking but isn't it just feels like someone kind of just appreciating how someone seems to be content with just what they're living which is a nice contrast from like the kind of existential crisis delivered by still running um hot boys is just a very silly kind of song which is kind of in the in the same vein of all sorts of pop punk songs talking about girls from the mid early 90s it's a lot of fun kind of throwaway but uh we then get kind we then get kind of breakup song that that was a joke about the kind of reaction and kind of rebuilding of life after kind of like a breakup and stuff. And again, the sound and the delivery of the lyrics kind of take you first. And when you start listening to them, they kind of like take, oh yeah, this is a slightly more serious kind of introspective thing that they are singing, that that Lauren Hibbert is singing about. And and the chorus is like going, I'm going to theme parks by myself and doing these things by myself and kind of moving on stuff. It's like a nice kind of, a way of just like kind of describing something that's happened to and related to probably a lot of people in the 2021 best of on talks about goober i briefly talked about um that lon hibbard's got a few songs that she kind of highlights a, a more kind of slower song with but with a way of being able to world build and tell a story in a slightly more interesting way and the album track garage band superstar does this very well in talking about a dream where she wrote one song and becomes famous and has all these kind of like things happen to her. She's on TV. She's been interviewed people. She sees people, people stop her in the streets or on the bus and say, Oh, I love your song and stuff. And it's just like an immediate kind of reaction to stuff. But then the bubble bursts and reality kicks in again. And it's like, Oh, that was a dream that never happened. But, and <laughs> what's funny is that this is the second verse is sung by Brendan B. Brown from Wheatus, you know, teenage dirtbag Wheatus. And it complements quite well in terms of um, what happens. And there's a kind of weird kind of symmetry in that. And I think the story that probably is telling, there's a nice symmetry with the guest vocals being done with the what's actually being sung about. 
then again you've got the song i'm insecure which is again the ode to the ibs and closes with like kind of two kind of slower songs again just showing the kind of storytelling prowess of the hibbard uh slimming down he slimming down is the kind of slow like kind of inter- introspective sad track that kind of ends a previous EPs and then leads to the last song ever and last song ever i think is like a great way of the, the album to end um kind of building with like a kind of emotional breakdown and slowly building and building and building with the kind of almost not full-on kind of Kate Nash's rant at the end but the kind of the sung storytelling of how eventually will break of the kind of spiraling out that happens and leads to kind of the noise at the end and the closing of the closing lines of don't forget to take your party bags on a basically a bunch of fun album is a nice impactful way to end it and you're just there thinking well this was a lot of fun and then if you've got it on repeat radical starts again and you listen to the whole thing again and this point this this album um self-deprecating nature mixed in with the kind of fun like bubblegum indie pop punk esque sound of it just again the phrase i keep using ticks so many boxes it just sounds good i i I can sit down listen to it and the album's finished it's such an easy listen to go through and it's just a lot of fun and i can't i'm running out of things to say without feeling like i'm repeating myself but lauren hibbard's garage band superstar is like one of my favorite albums i think i this is a, a long this is like very quickly fast tracking to what could become a top tier album i mean if i think it's as good as wages of fear that overtakes that's overtaken a bunch of albums i've watched Liverpool about on on previous albums so that's how much i've really liked this album and if you're into that kind of stuff like the not no, it's pop punk pop punk then i fully recommend listening to it and with that um i've rambled on far too long I'm just going to say thank you for listening. If you're still listening, if you've heard me just ramble on about this album, if you've, I always want to say thank you for listening to Pick a Disc. Thank you for sticking with us for another year. Um, 2022 was great. I can't believe this is the end of the fourth year. I'm now entering my fifth year of the podcast. And the 2023, at the time of recording, I have already recorded about all of January's episodes. I am looking forward to you to listen to them. But again, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you to all the guests that have come on, all the people who have listened, all the people who have said something nice, all the people who have just encouraged me to carry on for these four years. I'm so looking forward to going through that. I'm also just amazed. I've just forgotten to mention that this was the year that I reached 100 episodes and I'm still slightly amazed at that. I'm still accidentally forgetting to type in three digits when I'm writing the file names for the episodes. Uh, yeah, that's how much it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm conscious of the time. I'm conscious of the fact that if you've listened to me ramble on this long, my voice is about to break down because a sore throat is going to come. My voice is going to break down because a sore throat is on the horizon. So I'm going to shut up for now. I was going to say thank you. And remember, the next episode isn't isn't going to be that far, actually. It's going to come on the 3rd of January because it's going to be the Tuesday. And the episode that you're going to be hearing in a few days is Alt J's The Dream with my guest Lee from Heard This. So you've heard it here first. I'm revealing stuff ahead of time. I'm not going to reveal the other ones I've recorded, though. You're going to have to wait for that. Bye. (laughs) 